a flame, a factory, and data processing. Here at the George D. Roper Corporation in Kankakee, Illinois, we are going to see just how these three things are related and how they've helped this company grow. To explain these relationships at Roper and the story behind them is Mr. Richard S. Burke, President. Welcome to Kankakee and to our plant. It's with great pleasure that I am here to tell you about our company, our products, and the important part that data processing plays here at Roper. Perhaps our product display area may seem to be an odd place to talk about data processing, but it's here among these ranges that our story begins, because we're in the range business. Our product's the reason for our existence. We manufacture and sell both gas and electric ranges and have been doing so for 78 years. Our product, manufactured and marketed under our own brand and other brands, is one of the key elements in the highly competitive home appliance industry. Here at Kankakee, some 1,300 plant employees are producing about 40,000 ranges per month. This is in excess of one complete range per person per day. We manufacture over 500 different models to fit the demanding needs of the home appliance market. Models like our built-in cooktops and ovens, beautifully styled to fit the new home construction and kitchen remodeling market with exclusive features like the Roper Cook and Keep oven control, or our freestanding line for the high volume appliance dealer and the merchandising utility market, and our beautiful new eye level charm line, the newest and most talked about kitchen appliances in the industry and truly for all markets. We have the product and the ability to manufacture for this fast paced market our growth here has been sharp. We've more than doubled our output in just four short years. To maintain control of our business in the face of this increase in our size and in the complexity of our product line required the development of a better control system. The three major objectives of this system are these. First, we need a system that would allow tighter control over our operating functions a control that we always had, but the information was either intermittent or arrived too late to be completely useful. In addition, we needed a system that would reduce our business risk while at the same time stepping up our pace. We felt that to accomplish this objective, we must reduce our manufacturing lead time. But this also meant that we had to reduce lead times in other areas as well. And finally, we needed a system that took strictly clerical functions and in effect made working papers out of paperwork. Faced with these objectives, we knew that they could be only accomplished by developing our integrated data processing system. Here at Roper, we're proud of our system, a system we feel confident has been an intrinsic element in our recent growth. To tell in more specific terms about our system, I'd like to introduce Bill Miser, our assistant controller. Bill? Thank you, Mr. Burke. Before we talk about data processing, let me tell you about the manufacturing operation. Let's take a quick tour of the plant. Here at Roper, quality control is primary. Quality and control begins right in the receiving and raw part storage. The demands for tighter controls at this point are ever increasing due to the expense and risk of excessive inventories and our rigid quality requirements in purchased components. These vast stores and the immense variety of items readily eat up valuable space and important capital investment. The fabricating of these materials again requires the ultimate in control procedures. These high-speed, fully automated machines, such as our flying shear and our six-stage automatic burner press operated by one man, are capable of tremendously high output. To assure maximum quality and to hold scrap and rework to a minimum, each step must be checked and rechecked and then checked again. 
and we must maintain sharp controls over the movement and scheduling of operations. In these vast high-speed spray booths, enameling lines, and bake ovens, once again we must have rigid controls if we are to maintain the product quality our customers have come to expect. As the product reaches the assembly stage, it goes down the line through a series of operations and both quality and functional tests are continually made. When a range is complete or anywhere along the assembly line, it may be pulled out and subjected to rigid technical testing in the quality control lab or practical tests in our home economics kitchen where each product is put through the rugged use demanded by the consumer. Tests to determine not only that each range works technically, but that it is the finest quality cooking facility ever. Here in this vast warehouse, no product remains for long. These sky-high stacks are moved in a constant flow. The traffic again demands maximum control for we are moving almost half a million units annually. Here at Roper, we make a constant effort to maintain the controls necessary to assure our customers of quality products always. That is how we manufacture ranges here at Roper. This is our control center, our data processing room. To tell you the Roper data processing story in depth, here is the man most responsible for its development, Mr. Clyde Jackson. Thank you, Mr. Miser. In May of 1958, IBM conventional equipment was installed. This system included the 402 and the 602. The system that we now have is the direct result of a team effort. The following types of equipment are the 026 key punch, 056 verifiers, 557 interpreter, 519 reproducer, 083 sorter, 084 sorter, and 088 collator, and the 1001 teleprocessing system. Our computer is the 1401, consisting of the central process unit, the reader punch, the typewriter inquirer, the printer, two 7330 magnetic tape drives, and a 1405 RAMAC. We have in excess of 450 programs, which in turn generate over 1,000 reports monthly from our computer system. These reports cover order billing, sales analysis, market research, various payrolls, purchase parts and finished goods inventory control, production control, shop orders, engineering change notices, various component requirements, personnel reports, accounts payable, and various other reports. Our master control board controls all of these operations. All of our programs are documented and flow charted. Mr. Burke has previously stated the reasons for our data processing system. We had to reduce the manufacturing lead time by 30 days. This was a tremendous undertaking. The following steps were taken to conquer this major problem. We established three objectives. Number one, we had to reduce the manufacturing lead time 30 days. Number two, we had to provide our vendors with a purchase order quantity within the stated lead time for that part number. And number three, we had to maintain the human element at all times. Various meetings were held with top management personnel. A direct result of these top management meetings was a team assignment of key personnel from production control, 
purchasing, data processing, and the accounting department. And from these people has developed our automated purchase order writing system. Our bills of material are in card form at the present. Now each part for each model is coded as to whether it is purchased, fabricated, or assembled. Our forecasters complete their forecast and turn their results into production control. Production control, in turn, develops a line production schedule. And from this line production schedule, a purchase parts explosion occurs. Now, actually, what this is, is the breakdown of each model into its component parts. Our next step was to develop the gross requirements. These are loaded into the 1405 RAMAC for each component part. In the gross to net, each part number has its own safety factor. This safety factor is multiplied times the total requirements. This is then netted out against existing orders and the inventory on hand. In our net to buy application, it makes all of the purchasing decisions based upon the price break and the lead time scheduled for delivery into our plant. The decisions involved in this are, is the part obsolete? What quantity must be ordered? What price break must we buy at? Is this a combined price break? Floor stock item. Is this a minimum or a maximum buying routine? Each part is not only selected as how much to buy, but is also priced. In writing our purchase orders, we can print on the average of 1,500 purchase orders per hour. Now on these purchase orders, we show off pertinent data applicable to the purchasing system. We also include the drawing number and the latest drawing change number. With this purchase order, we will also send an IBM order acknowledgement card. In writing our releases, we will show the schedule for the date required into our plant. A byproduct of this system is an order acknowledgement card that is sent to the vendor. We will also get an open purchase order item card. A 1001 teleprocessing card is sent to the receiving department to be used in receipt of the material. A byproduct of this system is a total dollars that is ordered by part number for each vendor and for each buyer. will also reflect the grand total of the dollars committed. Through the use of our order acknowledgement cards, we can ascertain whether or not a vendor has acknowledged our order. As each order is received, we know this immediately because as the truck is unloaded, a card for that order is pulled from the tub file and transmitted through our 1001 system into our data processing control. Our future applications here at the George D. Roper Corporation will include two 1050 teleprocessing systems to help us in our automation of our order billing system. We also will have a work in process inventory and cost control. We will also give a recommended machine load, recommended die setup, and a recommended manpower requirements. Accounts receivable will be automated also. Repair parts and line bouncing will be another phase which will be incorporated into our data processing systems. Not only that, but many other areas that will greatly benefit our company. Well, that's our data processing system. Let me take just a moment to recap the hard-hitting results that we have obtained with this system. First, we have reduced our purchase parts inventory cycle by 30 days, along with tighter inventory control. This has resulted in significant reduction in purchase parts inventory.
Secondly, we are now able to review our finished goods inventory position in one-sixth the time of our previous system. This obviously has resulted in additional inventory savings. We are now able to compute our gross requirements in three hours instead of three weeks. The tape mechanization of our shop order preparation and the tape maintenance of the master routing file on the system allows us to reflect engineering changes daily. Under our previous system, it could be as long as six weeks before a change were updated in the routing file. We are now assured that all shop orders released to the production floor reflect the current change level. Our purchasing system has provided us with many significant advantages in addition to the reduction of the purchase cycle. Through the 1001 data transmission system, receipts update our inventory immediately, virtually as the truck is being unloaded. Prior to the system, it took as long as 72 hours for receipts to be reflected in our current inventory status. Our buyers are now notified daily of all items received. They are notified weekly of all items overdue as well as items to be received within the next two weeks. The progress of purchase components is controlled between receiving and inspection so that any item that remains in inspection for more than 48 hours is brought to management's immediate attention. These are just a few of the many benefits of the system. What do they mean to the corporation as a whole? You've just seen data processing at work in our company. As you can see, we are very positive in our feeling toward it. But what's it really meant to us, to our business? Well, it's permitted us to meet those three major objectives that I outlined earlier. First, the systems allowed us to improve control over our operations. The speed and accuracy with which data is available to us now makes possible the maximum or optimum use of that information. This operational control allows us to spot sources of waste or leaks soon enough to do something about them. Excessive scrap, excessive labor are examples. Secondly, it's allowed us to fulfill our major objective of reducing our business risk through a 30-day reduction in lead time. In lead time in our manufacturing process, the purchasing of our parts, and in the entire cycle. Finally, through the mechanization of routine clerical functions, we now have data in machine processable form which was previously unavailable to us. And we can make special analyses such as customer sales, gross margin analyses, and daily labor reports. In fact, we can and do make a daily profit and loss statement. What we've accomplished so far has formed a solid base for what we plan to do in the near future. Shortly, we'll be converting additional functions to data processing. And therefore, I'm sure we'll have even better control in the future and achieve more effectiveness in the use of the company's information. All of which will contribute greatly, we're confident, to the future growth of our company. Thank you for allowing us to bring our plant and our story to you. I'd like to extend to each of you a personal invitation to come and visit us in person to see our plant and our facilities where control means quality, where quality is control.